Mr. Fraser, please get a grip on yourself. Well, I want to help you, but I don't remember anything else. Nothing I haven't already said. And you, Mademoiselle Barnard, did your sister say she was seeing another man? She never would have told me. Oh, this is a toughie. Remember, everyone, down the comments below what you would choose. Ah, okay. Why would she hide the facts from you? Betty knew I didn't approve of her behavior. Her flirting was spoiling any chance she might have had. Tell me, mademoiselle, what did you talk about with your sister? Silly things. Her new dress. She wanted a pair of black stockings to go with it. Mother bought her a brand new pair. The day it happened, she was crying. And to think that Betty never even wore them. Oh, poor mummy. Your sister used to sing, I believe. Did she ever perform in public? She dreamt about it, but she had a very bad cough. It troubled her greatly. She had to cancel auditions and miss lots of opportunities. A pity. Yes, she sang well, but that doesn't tell us much about the murderer. Qui sait? In any case, we now have enough information to draw up a relatively precise psychological profile. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Oh man, I'm going to use my head again. Alright. Killer is clever. Killer is sure of himself. He's bold. His confidence. Is Killer a seducer? I know. Pulsive. Alright. So, ladies and gentlemen, we can now surmise without too much risk of error that our adversary is calculative, sure of himself, a seducer of outstanding intelligence that he has plenty of self-control and that he likes railways. It's a good start. Other meetings may be necessary. I hope that you will be able to come back again. Well, it's just that... Is something bothering you, Mary? Well, Mr. Poirot, you see, I don't know if I can come to London just like that. It's normal that people helping with this inquiry should be reimbursed. Starting with you, Miss Trower, please allow me to pay for your train tickets. Oh, sir, I cannot accept. But you must. Mademoiselle, I may not be rich, but my brother left a fortune which will be mine. Mr. Clark, that's very generous of you. Well, someone has to foot the bill. Mr. Poirot, would it be possible for you to come back to Devon? Lady Clark has expressed a wish to see you. We'll adjust her medicine so she'll not be too drowsy. 
But of course. I shall come the day after tomorrow if it is convenient. Thank you all for coming. We will meet again soon. The meeting was most fruitful. Really? Hastings, I believe now we have everything we need to find a common point between the victims. Now it is time for us to use our gray matter. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. I don't want to use my brain cells. They hurt too much doing that. <laughs> All right. What do the victims have in common? Uh, Betty was seeing other men. Uh, The first two victims suffered from bad throat, and that was precisely the speciality of the third victim, Dr. Clark. We have a lead. It would pay to take a closer look at the medical records of Dr. Clark's patients. We'll do so during our next visit to Justin. I will do it myself, mon ami. You must remain in London just in case ABC sends us another letter. Very well, as you wish. He will everyone because if he does, it's kind of contradicting himself because he's ABC, you know. Thank you for coming, Mr. Poirot. Lady Clark is waiting for you in her bedroom on the first floor. Please excuse me, I cannot stay for the interview. I have to take Miss Gray to the station to see our lawyer in Turkey. Are you leaving Cheston for good? Miss Gray very kindly stayed with me to settle my brother's affairs, but naturally she prefers to find a position in London. Ah, très bien. I'll be absent all morning, Mr. Poirot, but the nurse is coming soon. She's to ensure that the dose of medicine doesn't make our patient drowsy. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Have a nice trip, mademoiselle. It's lovely the place that's bad because I can explore it. It's closed. It is not the right time. I make sure I look, you know, it's good for, uh, for there. <laughs> It would be rude to make Lady Clark wait any longer. Yes, it would. <laughs> She's fidgety. It would be rude to make Lady Clark wait any longer. Oh, all right. It would be rude to make Lady Clark wait any longer. This poor woman is very ill.
Please tell the nurse to hurry. Please. Okay. Please tell the nurse to hurry. Please. This woman is suffering. She is in no state to have a conversation. Mr. Poirot? My respects, madame. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Have you seen the nurse? She should have been here by now. Oh, I'm sorry. The telephone in the hall is ringing. I shall answer it. It'll probably be the nurse. <laughs> The Clark Residence, Detective Hercule Poirot speaking. How do you do, Mr. Poirot? I'm Lady Clark's nurse. I wanted to let you know that I won't be able to come for her injection today. Might Miss Gray be able to do it? She has just left, but I will take care of it. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Um, you'll find the skeleton key to open the medicine cabinet hidden in the lion trophy. You can count on me. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Oh, thank you kindly. Goodbye, Mr. Poirot. I gotta give the nurse her injection. <laughs> Here is the skeleton key. April 1925, Aceh Province, Sumatra. All right. Lady Clark is in pain. I have to give her an injection of morphine to ease her suffering. Lady Clark is in pain. I have to give her an injection of morphine to ease her suffering. Why do I have such a feeling this is going to cause me some problems? my pants. Because they took my pants. I don't know where they're my pants are at now. But I'll find it. Because they're in my pants. Especially the designed pants. 